It's uncompromising, addictive, and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally, and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Round four of the National Championship and round 10 of the World Rally Championship. Coming to you from Coates Hire, Coffs Coast Rally Australia. In today's program, Polaris and Can-Am continue their battle in the Australian side-by-side -side series. Michael Guest is on the pace with the extra power of the Turbo Maverick, but has he got the reliability to match the Polaris Razor at this all-important round of the Australian side-by-side -side challenge? Clay Battenoff will spearhead the classic clash, while Malkio reignites Group B fever in his period-perfect Audi Quattro. And of course, we'll feature the Armorall STP Power Stage in the Outright Championship and Four-Wheel Drive National Series with the opportunity for some early bonus points. The Outright and Four-Wheel Drive teams have the chance to bag five extra points before the rally has even begun. And with just one qualifying run, it is all on the line. There are no second chances facing off with your opposition to decide who gets the extra five points. Our resident rally expert, Dean Herridge, has discovered in the outright championship, those power stage points are critical. This round is all about the STP and Armour Roll power stage as our teams try and qualify to get into the final and take those bonus points. At the moment, Eli Evans and Glenn Wesson on the line in their Citroen. They lead the championship. They're fighting for five points if they can win this stage, which doesn't sound like a lot. But have a think about this. Eli leads the championship by eight points over Molly Taylor. That's all that's in it. Molly has yet to qualify for one of these stages. Eli, on the other hand, has won two of them. There's ten points in itself. A hugely important stage. And we're very excited about this one at Rally Australia. As Dean has just said, Molly Taylor in the Renault Clio again failed to fire last round, missing the power stage. But Eli Evans in the Citroen DS3 was the dominant force, beating his brother Simon in the Honda Jazz in a do-or-die effort. Tony Sullins was a very close third. In four-wheel drive, it was Mark Hedder who, despite all the dramas of getting the new Peugeot Maxi car to run at full power, snatched victory in the National Series from the Mitsubishis of Michael Bailey and Gerald Schofield. At the Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally this year, we're using the same course as 2014, beginning with a long straight off the start line to introduce the humps that are a feature of this stage. After a tight left at the Coates Corner, it's down across three humps to the first split at the Can-Am Crumps. The second sector has been graded this year, so it's a fast entry through Kumo Curve to Polaris Pass and the third and final sector. The second chance to stretch their legs comes downhill through the STP speed trap before cars enter a wide sweeper and the finish line that comes up at 2.4 kilometres. We've let Cody Crocker have a run in his Polaris Razor so he can tell us what he thinks. A special guest driver, Cody Crocker, three times Australian Rally Champ but also side-by-side -side reigning champion. Mate, you've done the course run on the STP and Armour Power Stage. Tell us what it is like out there. She's uh, good fun from memory from last year. You know, there's a few pretty good crests in there and good jumps, which are going to be, you know, for the power stage, you've just got to go flat out and take a few risks and try and get that extra half a second. If you can get it and someone else doesn't, you're going to make that, you know, that time, get those five points. So, uh, yeah, a few treacherous uh, corners out there. Some pretty, pretty good stuff on the exits of corners. There's a few stumps on the outsides hanging out there. So uh, you always want to keep it tidy. Depending where we are, this is, as you say, the same power stage as last year. Sometimes it changes around a little bit. Do you reckon that's an advantage for the drivers who have done it last year, the teams that have been here before? Yeah, definitely. There's a few corners. I call it the last two corners actually threading the needle to the finish. It's quite, quite narrow, but you can get through there really quickly. So if you've had a go at it at pace, then you've sort of worked out you can get a bit faster next time. This year, they'll be a bit quicker. From what I remember, this is a bit of an all or nothing stage. It's bumpy, it's tight, it's fast. This has got the lot, you could say. Yeah, and it's going to get quite cut up too. There's a few spots that are a bit powdery. Particularly going into one of the jumps there, it's actually powdery on the entry already. So you can see that they're going to dig some holes. It'll make the jump bigger as the day goes on. 
It could be interesting for our four-wheel drives and outright cars. Mate, uh, before you go, what you don't realise when you do the power stage, your crew want me to give you this. This is the tyre phone to make sure you sparkle this up now that you've got it dirty. It is a bit dusty. Look, a good Boy Scout's always prepared, mate. Oh, are you oh, kidding me? Here's one I had prepared earlier. Oh, he's BYO'd oh, it, Rusty. Quick. Can you believe that? He's bought his own product. <laughs> I can't believe it. He's jumped me. Over to you, Rusty, to recap all the qualifying highlights. Can't wait for this. Thank you, Dean. A couple of former teammates there, and the driving never stops. 20 cars lined up to try their chances. In four-wheel drive, the competition was tight, and the slightest error was a knockout blow, as Irishman JJ Hatton discovered. A great performance by Andrew Penny got him into the fastest five, but it wasn't enough. Likewise, for last round winner Mark Pedder, his frustrations continued with the maxi car not delivering anything like its potential. Out of the three in fourth place. Surprisingly, no Justin Dowell in the mix, a power steering pump failure in the Hyundai Proto. The only thing that separated the elder statesman of four-wheel drive, Gerald Schofield, and his adversary, Michael Bailey, was Guy Tyler. Half their age, and with plenty of determination, Tyler showed why he's leading the South Australian State Championship, but all just outside the cut. No jump start for Mick Patton this round. The normally fast, smooth Repco Evo 10 wasn't the quickest, but did make the final. Round two winner Marcus Walcombe blasted out of the box to record second fastest time in the Tragonia Seafoods Evo 9, despite driving it without pace notes after forgetting to plug in the intercom. It was the blistering pace of Peter Roberts in the older model Mitsubishi who caught them all napping though, posting P1 in the final. So Mick Patton will face off with Marcus Walcombe and Peter Roberts in the hunt for bonus points the Arbor All STP Power Stage right after this. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship being held on the Coffs Coast. Perfect conditions for our Armor All STP Power Stage and the first of our four-wheel drive finalists is ready to go. After a very tight qualifying for four-wheel drives, here's our number three qualifiers and championship leaders, in actual fact, Mick Patton and Bernie Webb, mate, out here on the power stage. Always good fun, mate. Yeah, good way to start the event off. Uh, this is the first one we've got into. I think we went about three seconds early in Queensland on the jump start, but, um, yeah, I was, had strict instructions to go on about uh, three seconds after the minute this time. But, uh, yeah, no, it's good. Nice nice little stage and looking forward to it. Tight battle amongst the four-wheel drives. Some tight numbers in there. Yeah, it was good. The boys uh, all came to play, which is a nice yeah. thing. And then we've got a nice little large field as well and it was about 16 17 cars so yeah, yeah it should be a good weekend looking forward to it how are you tackling this one it is tricky um, yeah, look, I think it's it's one of those things. Yeah, the big picture is that uh, you know this weekend's the the, the big points gainer, but um, no, we'll have a crack. Yeah, for sure, we'll, we'll give it our best. Good luck, eh, mate. Go for it. Thank you. Three qualified with a one minute forty one point one one. Worth remembering too for this combination that the title, the four wheel drive title, is starting to get tantalisingly close. So Bernie Webb has already called this weekend for Mick Patton to think about the championship, play the long game. First of our splits coming up through Coates higher corner. It's a great snapshot this stage of what the competitors can expect in the full rally. It's got a little bit of everything. That's our first sector split, Can Am. He lays down the benchmark. Pumped to be in the power stage, but it's the weekend that's his focus. And five right mid. Had a gearbox issue these guys last time out. They bent a shifter cable and it tried to grab Seven two gears, so they've sorted that this time out. Seven tuck, you've got into, it's four late. And short eight left right over Brow. Car's been back to race talk for a freshen up in between rounds. Second sector at Polaris. Opens. A strict tyre management strategy for the weekend as well. Brow into nine right. Looks tidy so far. Into nine right, press into seven right, tuck. Press into seven right, tuck. He's got a great philosophy six, about six, not binning it in the first 300 the metres, Mick Patton. He wants to keep late, it tidy six, and straight for the rest six, of this event. Late, six, flat brow, 40. Nine right, hold, seven left, short. 
50 over finish. It's tidy, it's not radical. It's a nice clean run from Mick Patton. And a 1 minute 40.36, he gains 8 tenths compared to his qualifying run. Good work. Yeah, it was real good. Yeah, missed a couple of areas and lost a couple of seconds on two things. And in a in a stage that's this tight and this close, it might be costly, but they might have the same mistakes as well. But uh, no, it was a nice smooth run and warm up for the week the weekend. We'll take a look at some of the highlights here. They've raised this car a little bit in setup terms to deal with the Coffs Harbour stages. They're a bit aggressive, and you need a car that can cope well, ride the bumps here. Getting set for our second competitor now, back to Dean. Walken Brothers are back and second fastest qualifiers in the four-wheel drive. Great job, guys. That your time's pretty good for no intercom and having a few issues, so that gives you a bit of confidence going into here. Yeah, I think if we clean things up a bit and uh, and we've got some notes, um, we might be able to do a bit better. All right, so focus. A bit of bit, bit of early nerves in the early part of the qualifying, maybe. Yeah, nice to have that happen today. Yeah, so we get out of the way. Uh, well, like I said, good time, though, considering those dramas. Good luck through here. Uh, Mick Patton, about half a second quicker, so there's a little bit of time in there to be had, but it's all close amongst you guys. Good luck, eh? Thanks, Dino. And like this stage, the Walkens. They've done it reverse in the reverse direction in testing. Fast and open to begin with this stage. It is powdery in parts because of the running in the reverse direction in testing and rutted in others. Significant change for these guys between rounds. They've gone from Olens to Ryger suspension. A lot softer in setup and it's had a really positive effect on the car. Left entry, right seven here. Haven't driven since Canberra several months back. They're up. Good work. Compared to Mick Patton and Bernie Webb. The time these guys laid down in qualifying, a 1 minute 40.41, was almost on par with the run that Mick Patton and Bernie Webb just did. So if they can replicate that, they're in the game here. They're in the mix. Left five at tape. Gone up in the ride heights, up these guys as well. They the felt the car got hammered here in this event in 2014. We go to Polaris and look at the advantage. That's significant. You can tell it's a bit more aggressive. It's a bit edgier in the way that Marcus Walkham is attacking here compared to Mick Patton's. Then right nine over brow. Then nine right and seven left. Doesn't sound like there's an intercom issue this time around. They did have one, as Dean said there before, on the first run. over a hump. Nine Good job. Right, he couldn't hear all of the calls Seven on that basis. We're brow. near the finish of the Armour All Power right Stage. Ball. There's the marker. They've got to beat. And smashes it. A 37.04. Great work, Puff. Very smooth. Almost three seconds faster than his first qualifier. That's awesome. The car's good. I'm happy with my time. I'm happy the car's in one piece, ready for tomorrow. So Peter can do better than, um, than he's a deserved winner. He said it's a nice honour to qualify for the power stage earlier in the weekend, but they're eyeing up a podium, this pair, at Rally's End. It looked good, it looked fast, but you can see how smooth it also looks. Quite powdery in some sections here, and quicker, better than last year. So we have a change. That's our new leader in the four-wheel drive section. We'll grab a commercial break, come back with more from Coffs Coast right after this. Watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from Coates Hire, Coffs Coast Rally Australia. Our man Dean Herridge is with the fastest qualifier in the four-wheel drive Armour All STP Power Stage. Fastest qualifiers, what a great run. Peter Roberts did a demon time through there, but I've got to say, Walkers are just in a 137 dead. They've taken a couple of seconds out, so you're going to have to pick the pace up a little bit from qualifying. Well, there was a bit of confusion when we um, did the recce and we actually went and did, did, did the power stage down the road. And then when we got back, um, we were told we did the wrong one and then we only got two quick sort of rushed runs before the stage closed. So I was really only checking it the first time through. Okay, well that's good. We like that fighting talk there. That was your check run. So you've done your recce run on the qualifying. So you think you've got some time in you here? Yeah, we, um, well, well, we'll have to push to match him, I think, anyway. OK, well, we like that fighting talk. Go for it, guys. Good luck. Well done for qualifying. Can't wait to see this one. And very quickly, Rusty, have a look at this. Most people would want to be on the drive line. He has purposely chosen to be on the loose stuff. He obviously plans to light this thing up off the line. 
Thanks, Dean. Watch this pairing. Roberts is a former New South Wales state champion in 2011. Right five, stay in hope. Quietly spoken there with Dean before. A wry smile. They know they've got pace in this car. What a challenge, though, to have hardly any time to properly note it before coming in to tackle the power stage. Listen to it. Light up off the corner. Okay. Into state left over hump one. They were second behind John Mitchell in the 2013 Coffs Coast event. Largely does state rallies and rally sprints here in New South Wales. Look at how much he's found in that first sector. Great work. Those of you that are passionate enthusiasts might recognise this car. He acquired it at the end of 2007. It actually belonged to Michael Bowden. And Michael does a lot of the preparation on this Evo. Oh, that's nicely done continues to light it up and the sectors reflect that a 59 he is flying relative to Walkham. they won four wheel drive in queensland that was last year had a few issues though with a cam angle sensor problem they've got a new hollinger gearbox in this car and it's working superbly he's taken lots of things out of the car too only 10 liters of fuel on board no spare tires he is attacking peter roberts and andrew crowley we're nearly at the end of the stage he's going to absolutely blitz this a 35-4 walkham's was a 37-04 roberts has smashed it that was good yes yes I was um, thinking it was going to be difficult, but he took another couple of seconds off on our original time, but fortunately we found it. We take a look here on the Kumo replay, and beautiful, applies the horsepower. It has more horsepower now, this car, in excess of 200 with the work they've done in recent time, and he used it to good effect, Peter Roberts. To present the power stage winner's check, former series champion, Cody Crocker. Congratulations, the check's there. You had it in your eyes on the start line when I spoke to you. I think you really wanted to get this one, didn't you? Um, well, we, we were. If, if you win qualifying, I guess you want to. Uh, oh, sorry, if you win the um, the first run, I guess you want to win the second run. Yeah. yeah. But, but the thing was, you took off like a scalded cat, and I could hear you punching through the gears. I think it was game on from the from the time that flag dropped. You just had, like I said, I think you had the eyes on. Well, when you said that Marcus took two seconds off, I thought I'll have to have a bit of a go here. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I'm not going to get anywhere near him. Perfect start to the power stage for Peter Roberts. A great way to kick off his Rally Australia experience. We talked about it, the way it would light up and launch off the line, and that shows it. Back to Dean and Cody. Cody Crockett, what a run from the four-wheel drivers. They were giving it absolutely everything. Super quick in there, absolutely super quick. Some, some pretty rough roads in there, so it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. And as a lot of them are saying, it's a very technical stage, probably the most technical of the whole event. It's yeah. just the power stage <laughs> yeah, before they even start. What a way to start it all. Now, the challenge is we're about to get underway with our two-wheel drive, our outright category cars. What are the challenges going to be for those guys compared to what we just saw with four-wheel drive? Yeah, it's always a bit of a luxury driving the four-wheel drives. Coming out of particularly tight corners, you're getting a lot more power down, obviously. So the two-wheel drives here, it's getting a bit cut up, a bit dusty and powdery on the exits of corners and a few ruts. You've got to keep those two wheels in that driving area in the best part of the road. It's not about using your lines and using the edge of the road. You've just got to look for those ruts and find your best, best grip lines. So you can pinpoint accuracy on a really tough, tricky stage. Absolutely. You've got to keep it nice and neat and tidy. That's yeah. going to be the key. And you've got to get in, of course, Rusty. Over to you for the qualifying highlights for the outright cars. Thanks, guys. Well, Dean's comments earlier about the importance of the Armour All Power stage came home to roost in qualifying. Eli Evans crashed out in spectacular fashion just after Pedder's pinch. Too fast into a right hander with some stumps on the outside and just, uh, yeah, no real warning signs, just made a mistake. Um, I think Glenn picked up that we might have been going a little bit too fast, but I didn't see it. So, um, you know, he was right in this instance because he repeated the note as we came in. I acknowledge that I knew what it was and I still got it wrong, so um, tail between the legs. Unfortunately, the car's uh, not too good. Boys have got a lot of work to do. For Team Citroen, the priority now would be focusing on getting the car repaired in time for the main rally, beginning in less than 24 hours' time. Molly Taylor's and Tony Sullen's runs were interrupted by the Citroen crash, so they were granted a second qualifier and both managed to make the cut. 
Adrian Coppin, on the other hand, missed his first final all year, edged out by Taylor by less than two tenths of a second in her finals debut. It was Simon Evans, though, who set the benchmark in the tank former's Honda Jazz. At 1 minute 40.95, his and Sullen's times were the only sub-145 efforts in qualifying. So, Molly Taylor, Tony Sullins and Simon Evans are all through to the final of the Armour All STP Power Stage. All that when we return in just a few moments. Everybody looking for the bird's eye view at the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from the Coats Higher Coffs Coast Rally, our third fastest qualifier in the Armour All STP Power Stage is on the line and standing by with Dean Herridge. Just making it into our final here. First time in the Power Stage for Molly Taylor. Well done for getting in. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, thank you very much. It's nice to, to finally get in. It was definitely our goal this morning, uh, what we wanted to do. So now we, uh, I guess, you know, our goal's achieved. We, we, we qualified, so that was the first step. So now we just need to, you know, get a good rhythm for the rally and, um, you know, where we finish, where we finish. Yeah. Well, you're now getting points, you're guaranteed points, but obviously you want to get as maximum amount as you can. Eli's obviously not going to be in the final after his accident in qualifying, so chance in the championship game to really capitalise. Certainly, we, we need all the points we can get, so uh, we won't be holding back that, that's for sure. So um, we just, uh, you know, I think that the focus is doing a good job inside the car and what happens around you, you can't control that anyway. So For your first final, how's it feeling? Are you nervous? Oh, there's always a bit of nerves. There's more nerves before the qualifier. Now I feel a little bit more relaxed. So. Good luck for this run. Thank you. Actually done some car racing in the lead up. A 24 hour event in Lithuania driving a BMW, but she's focused on what she loves the most. And that is rallying underway. And slide left over hump, okay. Bill Hayes doing the calls. So experienced, Bill Hayes, great on the notes. And really instills some confidence, give reassurance, if you like, to Molly Taylor. Jump. On that throttle, nice and early out of the turn. Remember, this is a normally aspirated car, different to the Citroen. A lot of fun to drive, but you've got to be aggressive. You've got to push the Renault Clio. We have the benchmark effort at the Can-Am split. 50, late four left plus. 50. Small test in Canberra for this outfit in the lead up. Not a huge amount of changes to the car. And long three right plus. One thing they have worked on is brake balance in recent Five events. Right Help in. Molly lean on this car. Into four left right. Into keeps line left right on crest. Qualified with a one minute 45.25 at Polaris. That's our second split. Crest into three left Titans two. Narrow exit. Loves the team that she's working with now. The Bates crew, they're all a real group of enthusiasts but with great right results in their pedigree. 15, Very different to some right of the plus. European teams that she's worked with in the past. Two, four left. Check the STP speed trap and for you as well. Left, 134 three, k's right, an hour there, good work. Crest. 50, long. 50, long swipe right is four left, opens. Look at that, nicely done. Beautiful lines from Molly Taylor, and it's a 44, and she improves by six tenths on her qualifying effort. Nice work. On the rear still. But maybe it's just because it's so steep. In the rear bias, I reckon could almost go a little bit more front. Yeah. That actually felt re really good to me, but um, you know, the, the time, I don't know whether we're, we're losing a bit uh, up, up the hill at the start or. or it felt good to us and that run felt better than our qualifying run but it was only a second and I thought we were we improved more than that so I'm a bit of a loss for the time to be honest but you know we've got a good feeling in the car and it's a long rally so. Okay so there you go so they have talked about a potential throttle position sensor issue with this car and it running a little bit rich down low at times is that a factor will they need to work on that over the rest of the event on balance it did look like a very good run how will it stack up a 144 6.4 is well off the qualifying pace of tony sullins and he's waiting on the start line with dean a great run for tony sullins and julia barclay what a magic run through qualifying mate you would have been pleased with that yeah i'm very happy very happy indeed i had a bit of a go and it's paid off the stage like this it is tricky and narrow and there's no real rhythm in there. That's, does that suit you? I wouldn't have thought not generally, but that's a good run. Yeah, not generally, you're right. <laughs> uh, but I sort of had a bit of a mental 
have a go and, and push myself a little bit. So, yeah. So Molly's got a second quicker, but obviously she was a little bit off the pace of, of yourself and Simon for the for the qualifying run. Can you beat the guy behind you? I reckon if I have a good run, I might be able to crack a f under the 40s, yeah. but it's, it'll need to be perfect. It's more than likely gonna, if I cock it up, it'll be a 45. So <laughs> but I don't know how hard to push, but we'll, we'll go as fast as, I, fast as I'm there. Well, we're aiming for a perfect run then. That's what I want to see, mate. Yeah, me too. Three, two, one. Go. Give a one minute forty one point eight in qualifying. So very close to the forties. Gets off the line beautifully. They were happy with this car in Queensland, but the water crossing issues did hurt them. And he felt Tony that it didn't give them a chance to fully show the car's potential. All busy there. He was busy at the wheel, and that's important what he had to say there about overboosting. The suggestion in the lead up to this round is that he had an overboosting problem. They've got a new turbo on order, and the overboosting kind of makes it feel like a miss in the engine. It keeps cutting in and out. That could hurt him in this power stage. Looks fast there. He's clearly trying to drive around the issue. It's a really gnarly stage, this one. In better road condition than last year. That was Tony's observation on the notes. A bit powdery in parts, rutted in a few places. Got to be patient in the corners. Look at that there versus Molly Taylor. So in the second sector, the Citroen drivers had a good run and made some key gains. A little bit stiffer in the rear suspension with this car as well. Two kilometres an hour quicker at the STP speed trap. It's not much, but it is an advantage. Beautiful driving through there, Tony Sullins. Squares it up nicely for the run home, and look at that, a 41-2-8. Yeah, it's Every time it come on boost, it over it was missing, like burp, 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 and um, it, it must hit the boost cut and then stop and then go it hit the boost cut again. So every time I was pulling up a hill, it actually was going slower. So that'll be an issue for them for the rest of the rally as well. Hopefully they can find a way to get on top of it as we take a look. He was busy, he had his hands full there, and he discovered at this point the overboosting problem had resurfaced. Cracking time from Tony Sullins and worthy of the top spot for now. Will Simon Evans be able to knock him off? We'll have to wait and see right after the break. Welcome back to the Armour All STP Power Stage from Coates Hire Rally Australia beautiful Coffs Coast. Can Tony Sullins and Julia Barclay retain their top spot in outright two-wheel drive? Dean Herridge is on the start line. Fastest qualifiers and winning the power stage in Perth. They're back. Simon Evans, Ben Searcy, well done for qualifying, mate. Good job through there. Uh, thanks. It's a tricky bit of road, that one. It's uh, I love Coffs Harbour, but, geez, you know, you've got to have your wits about you out there. You do. It's obviously caught your brother, and you've had great rivalry through these power stages. So, you know, points up for grabs. Big weekend coming up. Now, we've got Tony Sullins. He's now the fastest time. He went about 0. 0.6 faster. Had a few little issues in there. Not a perfect run. So it's not as fast as you're qualifying. Can you match it up, though, and back it up? I said to Ben at the end of the qualifying run, I don't think we'll be able to go any quicker than that one. So, look, hopefully I can keep it neat. Like, we just... We were just really relaxed and, yeah. and focused, you know, and the car was, the Honda Jazz was just amazing. It just felt so confident at the stage. So hopefully we can back it up. Let's see how this one goes, Rusty. Can't wait for it. No brother rivalry, but Simon Evans at full flight. As you know, Dino, he is Mr. Excitement in this game and qualified the only driver in the one minute forties. Everyone else, 141s and above. Good start by Evans. You can sense that he's aware Tony Sullins has stepped things up when it comes to the power stage game. Got to be super committed this year. Limited spaces in the power stage. You've got to attack it, but not overcommit. That's right, 200. Jumps. Listen to that Honda Jazz. Maxed out in the RPM, and he gets plenty of air over the humps. 33.09. It's not much, but it is an advantage. Stay in. Let's 
trying to get that front suspension to settle under braking so he can get it turned. A little powdery through here. It's controlled aggression from Simon Evans, a joy to watch. Now to the Polaris split. He builds on it, but again, it's only tenths of seconds. This has been a good run from Tony Sullins. But attacking style from Simon Evans, that proves it. Lots of wheel spin there on the run up the little hill. Trying to look over the nose of the car. A little bit of air, that front left, 137 kilometres an hour. Good speed from Evans and Searcy in the Honda. Beautifully done through there. This is going to be close. Evans or Sullins, who will get there at the line? Evans does it. Evans wins the power stage. And how's this? His time is only three hundredths of a second quicker than his qualifying effort. That's consistency. That'll do. Point three. So we were trying hard. <laughs> not a lot in it though, is there? Nah, it's not a lot in it. Well done, mate. Good job, mate. I was driving my heart out. Oh, that's good. I was yeah. having to go too. <laughs> Sporting stuff from those guys, but it's really ramped up in the power stage, the competitiveness. So there were some perfect moments from Simon Evans. He wins the stage, but crucially, it's not by much. We've got a heck of a game on our hands when it comes to these Armour All Power Stages now in the championship. <laughs> Cody Crocker will present him with the Armour All STP winner's check. What a great run through the power stage, mate. We're on the line there. You said it's like sort of trying to sort of dive through those last sections on the knife's edge, and you've done it, mate. Well done. Yeah, look, I was really, like I said to you on the start line there, I'd be worried about trying to beat my first time, and we did by a few, se uh, few tenths of a second, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, it is hard. It's really tough out there. It's a very tricky stage, and, you know, the Honda Jazz just shone through. It was so easy to drive through it, so I was happy. Time now to wind back the rally clock. Neil Bates missed his second event for the year after a suspected blood clot had him sidelined before the flag had even dropped. Once again, the sister car from the same stable in the hands of last round winners Clay Batnock and Andrew Dunbar was left to fight with a raft of makes and models in the classic field. Phil Casper opened the account with a win for Ford, his escort one second quicker over the eight kilometres. The next stage fell to the RX-7 of Ivan Vovedin and Mark Malpas from Brisbane in their first Rally Australia. He had Badenoch's measure by 11 seconds through the 16 kilometres of Baker's Creek, but it was short-lived after cutting a corner next stage. Tore the front right hub off, um, caliper and all. Casper had Badenoch again in SS3 but by later in the day, would provide no further challenge for the Celica driver. Brett Stevens continued to push him, though, in his Nissan Bluebird, while Matthew Lining made his presence felt through the first day, but slipped off the leaderboard in the first stage of day two. That left the way open for Lindsay Collitz, who was finally realising a dream in his Dato 180B, up to third. And this is our home event. It's not going to get any closer. The first stage started right next to my house. So I thought we better get off our tails and do it. Another local, Troy O'Doherty, was doing it as well in his TR7. But a rogue Conrod let loose in his V8, spelling the end of his Rally Australia. Mick O'Hagan had a blinder through the long 50k stage, second fastest behind the yellow Celica. But he dropped out of contention on day one with alternator failure. And now, after a moment in Nambucca, the Irishman was questioning just how lucky his favourite colour really was. I'm starting to believe that green's an unlucky colour for a car now, so we've had nothing but bother this weekend, but maybe a respray might help. Luck also wasn't on Brett Stevens' side distracted by a myriad of niggling issues to date, now stuck in the main street of Bowerville with a self-imposed service, promptly dropping him to fifth. The gearbox just locked up as soon as we went from first to second, turning right at that intersection. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, quick removal of the tail shaft so we weren't sitting in the main street, and um, we are away. A couple of early model four-wheel drive invitational entries, unable to qualify for classics, were also circulating for their benefit and the crowds. Kim Ackworth sporting the factory ProDrive Subaru Liberty colours from the early 90s and 
an Audi Quattro in its 80s period livery. Scoring points has nothing to do with why Mal Kio is out rallying one of these famous Group B cars, driven in their day by the very best. Those guys are absolutely amazing. Like, you just don't realise how hard they are. Like, um, it's very, very pig-headed from time to time, but um, like I say, it's, it's just getting there. And uh, But yeah, the rolls and the matons, unbelievable. The third and final day opened with Bucker Long, and Lindsay Collett's chances of making the finish of his rally weren't sounding good. Robert Clark's Mark I Escort sounded fine, but he never looked right from the start after a pre-event bingle. Mind you, he and co-driver Jennifer started and finished every stage of the event. Keith Fackrell crept up in another Escort, an immaculate Mark II that by the end of the event had secured him second outright. It was Clay Badenoch, though, with Andrew Dunbar pointing the way that laid claim to the top spot this round. Now, with an unassailable lead in the Classic Series for 2015. Next, it's the Australian side-by-side -side challenge. Polaris versus Can-Am. The battle continues right after the break. of the side-by-side -side challenge where the fastest of these machines in the world gather to pit themselves against each other. Polaris versus Can-Am. Two manufacturers toughing it out in a competitive environment. With top rally drivers Cody Crocker and Michael Guest at the wheels, alongside the privateers, it's been a seesaw battle as each manufacturer comes up with improvements. In 2014, the new Razor 1000 made life very tough for the Maverick. But then, Can-Am introduced their turbo machine and the tables were turned. Michael Guest winning every stage he finished. Round three continued the trend. Guest and co-driver David Green led the way for Can-Am through the opening stage. Crocker was two seconds behind for Polaris. Four left and a right. Without an intercom next stage, Guest was driving blind, taking the edge off his pace and opening the way for Polaris. It was the chink in the armour, though, that has stopped the Mavericks' clean march this year, but again forced early retirement for the Can-Am ambassador. For some reason or other, we've just had an issue with that clutch belt. So we're just looking at that now and getting set it up ready for tomorrow. And whenever you pull a new machine out and put it into the, you know, the, you know, into motorsport at that level, you're always going to find there's a few little things you need to massage, and that's what we're doing at the moment. His teammate Nathan Shivers, very conscious of his own machine's weakness. Yeah, I guess it's always in the back of your head. I mean, these these are, do have a belt drive, and. Um, I think what's going on with Michaels, he's, he's trying an aftermarket one and um, it hasn't been working out, so he's going to go back to the stock one, which I've been running the whole time and, and haven't had the belt issues. So hopefully um, that'll be the end of belt issues for Michael because he, he ripped it up this morning. He, he got the fastest stage time and did really well. So he'll be back out tomorrow and um, hopefully keeping Cody honest. But the commentator's yeah. curse struck and the Anglom Oil Turbo Maverick broke a belt very next stage. Two left. Just half a K from the finish, and it was almost all downhill. Luck was on their side. Through the same stage, Ian Hughes showed his more experienced teammate he was no slouch behind the wheel. Cody Crocker set the fastest time at 5 minutes 49.5. Hughes and David Piper finished just one second behind the three-time Australian Rally champion. In fact, by the end of the day, the repeat run through North Bank, Hughes took the stage win by 0.6 of a second. Next morning, he revealed his own secret with the clutch in his razor. Belt trouble, we haven't been having any, but we've since found playing with clutches can make a big difference, which is free and open to us. So we've been changing weights and that sort of thing to try and get it at maximum RPM quicker, hold it at maximum RPM quicker. 
Um, over in Tamworth, it was working fine, everything was working unreal. Yesterday morning I found over at Coffs here, it was hitting the rev limit, so I was losing a bit of time there. Mm -hmm. So I've had a play with it yesterday, Arvo, and now everything seems to be spot on over here, so it's good. The long 50 kilometre stage was always going to be a test for man and machine. Stamina and tyres are usually the issues for rally teams in long stages. No issues for tyres in the side-by-sides or stamina for the drivers this stage. But the test would be on the drivetrain. Ian Hughes passed. Nearly a minute slower than his teammate Crocker, but both were home for a 1-2 for Polaris. Nathan Shivers couldn't match the Polaris pace in his Maverick, but he was the lone flag flying for Can-Am after the factory driver again suffered from the drive belt overheating. Frantic overnight modifications saw guest service crew shield the belt from the hot exhaust to rejoin for the final day. Just peak. Oh, really? Yeah. So, is too much trouble or...? <laughs> I like to think of it as character building, actually, so... <laughs> Yeah, I've got a bit of a gremlin in the car here that we need to sort out. Like we got the, no doubt we've won every stage this year when we haven't had a, had, a, had some sort of an issue. So um, you know it's the fastest side by side in the world, and we just got to uh, sort that little gremlin out and put it back down and make it all happen. And he did, with careful management of speed and therefore lower exhaust temperature through the first stage of the day, Michael Guest was again back on the pace, comfortably matching the Polaris Razors. The weekend win was an all-Polaris affair though, and with Cody Crocker will need to watch from inside his own camp. A hard-charging Ian Hughes has certainly come to terms with driving these machines in a rally environment. Nathan Shivers secured a berth for Can-Am on the podium, but Michael Guest will be back for sure to square the scorecard for Can-Am at the final round in South Australia. Stay tuned next week for all the action from the main competition, the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Coming to you from the Coats Hire Coffs Coast Rally Australia. I hope you can join us. In the meantime, keep up with all the latest news at the website, rally.com.au. Greg Rust, we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, and a suspension, Armour, STP, Coats Hire, Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars. <laughs>